Well, the lightning storm isn't over yet, but looks like there might be a break up ahead. And this odd little island, or boat, or building, offers a welcome respite from swimming. It's also a good spot for Diaper Boot to assess the situation while we discuss the diagnostic testing involved in seizure evaluation. To gather some objective data to get to the bottom, or top of things, DB has climbed to the top of the spire, which is actually slightly concerning given the nearby lightning. It appears he's about to prick his finger, to remind you that a finger stick blood glucose is essential to rapidly ensure the patient is not hypoglycemic. And the destroyed quality sign bobbing up and down in the waves is a quality reminder to rule out long QT syndrome and arrhythmia. So, grab an EKG, and while you're in the neighborhood, throw that patient on a cardiac monitor, will ya? This high-flying white bird is gaining some elevation, and seems to be heading in the wrong direction. See the nice sunny sky? It's that away, bud. Uh, nevertheless, we've included our symbol for elevated WBCs because leukocytosis can be seen following seizure. Careful, though. Elevated WBCs can also indicate infection. Having completed its scavenging for the day, this high flyer is carrying a bucket of CPK crispy chicken and spoiled milk. CPK and lactic acid are commonly elevated post-seizure, but just as in the case of WBCs, they are delightfully nonspecific. This is why we recommend ordering a seizure level. Now, that blood test is really helpful, but uh, it, uh, it doesn't exist. Sorry. What does exist are the good old faithful complete blood count, complete metabolic panel, magnesium, calcium, urine analysis, alcohol, tox screen, and relevant anti-epileptic drug levels, which should all be ordered and considered.